If you're new to owning finches or you're thinking about getting into the hobby, today I'm going to run through some basics and answer some questions that you might have to help you get started. What's up guys and welcome to the channel where I help you with finch info, tips and tricks. In today's video we're going to be focusing on the basics of how to take care of your finches. This is more specifically aimed at those who are new to the hobby or who are thinking about getting into the hobby and want to start off on the right foot. So without further ado, let's dive right in and get started. Housing. When choosing an enclosure for your pet finches, there are a few important factors that you need to take into account. First and foremost, is the enclosure size adequate for the type and the number of finches that you have or are thinking of having? Finches can't thrive on their own, and so assuming that you're new to the hobby and starting out with a cage, then it will need to be big enough to house at least two birds. It's recommended that the minimum cage size for a pair of passive finches should be no smaller than 30 inches long by 18 high and 18 wide. Tall cages aren't really ideal, because unlike parrots who can climb for exercise, finches prefer to get theirs by flying horizontally and so do best in longer flights. When it comes to enclosure size, longer is generally better. The next thing that you need to consider is do you have the correct location and space to house the enclosure? Ideally, the cage should be placed above adult waist height. Finches are skittish by nature and any surprise approach by a human from above can scare them and cause unnecessary stress. Additionally, if you have dogs or small children, placing the cage at a suitable height helps to avoid the same surprise approaches and allows you to keep your birds safe from harm. Finches have a high sensitivity to temperature fluctuations too, and drafts can kill. So it's massively important that your cage location isn't near any drafty areas such as open windows, aircon units, open vents, etc. The same goes for the other end of the spectrum, so no space heaters or heat vents in very close proximity. You'll also need to consider ease of cleaning as well. Make sure that you're physically able to reach every inch of the cage for deep clean sessions or daily spot cleaning. The easier you can make this part of the hobby for yourself, the more enjoyable it will be. Lastly, consider how much you can afford to spend on a cage. Price is generally dictated by size and there are hundreds of different cages out there. And although the market is towards small birds including finches, not all of them are suitable. You can buy a cage in used condition for a fraction of the price of a brand new version and a good thorough deep clean can get most used cages looking new in no time. Do the best for whatever budget you have and whichever choice you make just be sure that your chosen cage has a quarter or half inch bar spacing any narrower or wider and you risk injury to your birds diet there are lots of different types of finches and so i'll cover breed specific diets in a future video but for now let's look at some basic foods to help your finches reach their nutritional requirements a good healthy diet is absolutely imperative to giving your birds a long, healthy life. Most species of finches are grass and seed eaters. It's a staple part of their everyday diet and so a good quality foreign finch seed mix is an important addition to what they should eat each day. Some finches will eat fruits but given time to get used to them, most will eat vegetables and leafy greens. If you're not able to provide them with their exact wild diet, then fresh veggies and dark greens will go some way to help and give them the correct nutrition that they need to thrive. Finches are extremely sensitive to growing agents and pesticides, so always be sure to thoroughly wash your birds' veggies and greens even if you're using organic. Breeding birds require a more specific diet, but assuming that yours are just pets, then the foods that I mentioned will suffice. Your finches require vital diet ingredients to live long, healthy lives, and two of the most important are protein and calcium. Both can be found in lots of different veggies and greens, but there are other ways to make sure that your birds get what they need. Your finches should always have a constant supply of calcium sources at their disposal, and two of the most common ones that we use are cuttlefish bone and crushed oyster shell. Other than being a good tool for keeping nails and beaks trim, Cuttlefish bone isn't as internally absorbable as crushed oyster shell and so flushes through the bird's system a lot quicker, but both are great to have on hand and fairly inexpensive too. Another great source of calcium is the eggshell from chicken eggs. It's important to remember though that these need to be boiled, microwaved or oven baked. Eggshells have got microscopic dimples all over them making them porous and susceptible to harbouring bacteria. So, one of the free preparation sources mentioned above will ensure they're bacteria free and good to go. 
Protein can come in many forms too, and a great source of this can be given as egg food mix or mashed boiled eggs. Non-breeding birds shouldn't need more than two to three offerings per week so as to not overload them with protein. If they already have fresh veg through the week, then that may include high protein foods such as corn, broccoli and kale, so egg food or fresh egg isn't really needed more than a few times a week. Besides food, the other most important part of your bird's diet is fresh, clean water, all day, every day. Birds need water to survive and smaller birds such as finches can dehydrate in a matter of a few hours. Under heat, bacterial growth can grow and double very easily in water and food, so it's very important to remember to replace fresh food after a few hours of it being offered, replace water ideally twice per day, and always thoroughly wash and clean water and food containers each time you replace both. Maintenance. When it comes to cage and bird maintenance, as a responsible bird keeper, you must be on top of your game. A good cleaning and maintenance schedule is extremely important to have in place as a dirt air unclean cage can soon become a dangerous environment for your finches to be trapped in. Cage cleaning is generally a daily and weekly to weekly occurrence. Spot clean daily and deep clean weekly or fortnightly. This method will ensure your finches stay free from illness and disease caused by an unclean environment. Daily spot cleaning usually consists of removing and replacing the cage floor substrate, wiping of accessories such as perches and swings, removing and cleaning any containers for water and food, and wiping down any soiled surfaces such as trays and cage bars. The substrate that you use can differ based on preference. Personally, I prefer newspaper. It's cheap or often free, easily recyclable, and a good surface for monitoring my bird's poop. The colour, amount and consistency of your bird's poop is a great indicator of any ailments or disease your birds may be suffering from, and so it's good practice to monitor this each day to keep on top of your bird's health. Your daily bird maintenance is just as important. Look at your birds, make sure that their eyes are bright and free from any discharge or partial closure. Check the feathers for any breakages or cysts forming. Look over the vents and ensure that they're clean and not soiled. Check for overgrown beaks and nails. You're basically doing a quick health check to make sure your birds are healthy and in tip-top condition. Deep cleans can be done weekly or fortnightly, or as often as you like. This will involve a much more concentrated clean of your bird's cage and accessories. Most flight cages have some form of partition, which makes it an easier job for you to do when you're cleaning. If yours does, partition the cage and clean one half at a time. Scrub the bars, and once removed, scrub the perches, swings, etc. with warm, mild, soapy water. And remember to get rid of any residue that could harm your finches. There are products out there, such as F10, that are bird safe once dried. Give your equipment a spray with that once cleaned, so as to ensure any germs and bacteria are well and truly killed off. Most cages have removable ground trays. Take these out so you can completely clean and disinfect them away from your birds. Again, there are lots of disinfecting products out there to choose from. Go with one that you feel comfortable with using, or that suits your budget. I personally use a bird safe disinfectant that needs diluting before use. A 5 litre tub works out a lot cheaper than buying ready made store bought versions in smaller bottles. It's a good idea to have double of everything for your cage too. That way for example when you remove perches to be cleaned you've got the duplicates to replace straight away without needing to wait for the wash ones to air dry. Other than the joy of watching my birds, the satisfaction that I personally get from seeing a new lead deep clean flight for them is second to none. It honestly makes the time consuming chore of it all extremely worthwhile. Environment Your pet finches will need a warm, clean, safe and stress free environment. Within their cage they'll need food, water, perches, a bath, sources of mental stimulation and a clean home. On the immediate cage exterior they'll need a suitable light source and maybe even a heat lamp if the ambient temperature at times isn't high enough. These are all the basic needs that every finch keeper should have. Finches are highly sensitive to temperature changes, however, a lot of species can acclimate quite easily to home based temperature levels, but depending on the species you keep, some will need more strict temperature and humidity needs. A heat lamp can help at times when there are fluctuations and drops such as at night time. A cover over the cage at night is another good way to keep them nice and cosy while you're wrapped up warm in bed. We've already mentioned the importance of a clean home for your finches to live in. After eating and drinking, finches like to wipe the beaks on perches and other surfaces. If those surfaces are soiled and unclean, you risk your birds becoming ill. 
Food and drink containers are a haven for bacteria, so remember to clean them thoroughly and often. Finches love to floor forage too for seeds and other morsels, and if left unclean, the cage floor is another place that can put them at risk of illness. Stress can and will kill birds. Sudden movements can scare them into a flight frenzy where they were a serious injury or at the very least, stress them out to the point of it actually affecting their immune system, which can then leave them susceptible to illness and disease. Stress vocalisation in finches can have a knock-on effect too with others around them, and in turn making them stressed too. Erratic movements and loud noises from humans and animals in their vicinity are dangerous for their well-being, so ideally they should be kept out of reach from dangers and in and around a nice calm atmosphere. If you keep birds of any kind, then paying close attention to their air quality is vital. Your finches have air sacs that, when breathing, send an undirectional flow of air through their tiny lungs, thus helping in the exchange of gases throughout the body, and general respiration that then allows them to expel through their trachea. The air they take in is extracted of oxygen in order to supply body tissues, so you can imagine how sensitive they can be to airborne chemicals by how technical their respiratory system is. Therefore, a hugely important factor to consider inside your home is the use of any airborne chemicals that can create lingering smells. This includes tobacco smoke, scented candles, deodorant, perfumes, hairspray, bug spray, incense burners, paints and glues, burnt cooking oil, even Teflon coated and non-stick cutware. The list is quite extensive so be sure to thoroughly research what you can and can't use near your pet finches. Mental stimulation is important for your finches too. Unlike other pet bird species, finches don't really necessarily benefit in the way of mental stimulation from toys and other fancy bird accessories. They love to explore, so a few hanging accessories for them to pull on and peck at may work for the more inquisitive individuals, but what does play a huge part in Finch's mental health is diet. A complete diet does more for the brain health than any shiny plastic or wooden toys could ever do. In the wild, Finch's mental stimulation comes from searching for seeds, bugs, fruits and mineral sources. A great diet, some cuttlefish bone to attack and some millet sprays to tackle will suffice for your birds. At times, they may even tear up the newspaper on the floor or other substrate, pick at rope and wooden perches, and forage for wayward seeds and other foods. That's not them being bored, it's how they keep a healthy mindset. Company. Last but by no means least is a part of being a finch keeper that you cannot avoid having more than one. Unlike canaries, who are quite happy to live alone, finches need company. The social birds by nature and therefore need the company of at least one other finch. Even numbers do best and even sex numbers is important to avoid aggression and stress when the hormones kick in. So for example, a flock of two hens and four cockbirds would be more of a risk at causing behavioural issues. Same goes for if it was the other way around too. If you just want to keep finches as pets and don't want to breed, then same sex pairs and flocks are best. Just bear in mind that if you do keep a mix of sexes and you don't intend to breed, nature may eventually take its course despite you doing your best to stop it from happening.